Happy World Sake Day! Hey guys, my name is Jeku Jonzu and welcome to my channel. Yes, today, October 1st, is World Sake Day, an event in Japan made to celebrate the delicious alcoholic beverage made out of fermented rice. October 1st is said to be the day in Japan where sake brewing starts. And what better way to celebrate World Sake Day than to make a video about the history of sake? Oh wait, first I gotta grab some sake. In this video, I will be drinking alcohol for the sake of education. Before we go on, please subscribe to my channel so I can pay for surgery when my liver inevitably fails me later on in life. Today I'll be drinking Nihonjin no Wasude Mono, or Japan's Forgotten Spirit, a Junmai Sake. I'll be getting into what a Junmai Sake is later, along with all the other types of sake. Getting the cork out of this bitch is the hardest part. Fuck me, I'm spending like two minutes on this. Finally got the fucking cork off. First, let's talk about the history of sake. Where did it come from? Well, sources say the production of rice-based alcohol in Japan goes back at least 2,500 years, but the first records of Japanese people drinking sake comes from third century Chinese textbooks. The textbooks noted that Japanese people would gather to drink this fermented rice liquid in times when they were grieving the dead. This old school sake was made by people gathering around a dug pit or vessel of some sort, chewing up some rice and spitting it into the sake pit. Enzymes in the saliva help break down the rice and speeds up the fermentation process. A great example of this is from the amazing animated movie Your Name, where Mitsuha is chewing up some rice and spitting out into a container to make sake for ceremonial purposes. I vow to make a video of me and my homies making spit sake if we can ever get through this pandemic. Hold me to it. In modern times, saliva is unfortunately no longer used. Fungi and yeast are usually used to aid in the fermentation process. Sake production used to be heavily monitored by the government throughout all of Japan's history until the early 20th century when the government decided, f*** it, everyone brews sake. We won't ever monitor it as strictly as we used to, causing a bunch of family-owned breweries to shut down. And then after a while, the government started to regulate it uh, about as strictly as they used to, causing a bunch of family-owned breweries to shut down. Actually, kind of cool fact, since so many family-owned breweries were forced to shut down in the 20th century, you can actually find a lot of sake breweries that are abandoned dotted throughout the countryside. So nowadays, sake Sake is split up into different classifications like Junmai, Ginjo, Daiginjo, and Honjozo. There are a few other types, but I'll get more into that later. The sake types are classified by how much milled rice they use and how much additional alcohols they add. Milled rice just means rice where its outer layers have been removed. So the percentage of milled rice used means the percentage of rice used that has been delayered. Junmai is the most run-of-the-mill type of sake, which happens to be the sake I'm drinking right now. No additional alcohol is added and about 70% of milled rice is used. This doesn't really mean much to people who aren't very versed in the process of making alcoholic beverages, but Junmai has a really rich flavor but is somewhat acidic. You'll often receive Junmai sake hot to hide the impurities in it, but hot Junmai sake just actually turned out to be really fucking delicious. Ginjo sake uses about 40% milled rice and is made at a low temperature to try to keep its natural flavors intact. Though the most labor intensive to make, Ginjo sake is considered to have the best aroma out of all the types of sake. Ginjo sake is also best served cold. Dai Ginjo sake uses about 30 to 50% milled rice, but if it doesn't have any extra alcohol added, it is oftentimes just considered Junmai sake. Honjozo sake is also made using about 70% of milled rice, but brewer's alcohol is added to the mix. This actually lowers the alcohol percentage in the final product, but makes it a lot smoother to drink. My favorite sake I've ever drank was actually a high-end Honjozo sake brought back from Japan, and it was so smooth it felt like I was drinking water. There are other types of sake, like Nigore sake, which is a cloudy, unfiltered sake that is a lot harsher to drink with a higher alcohol content, but it has more of the delicious rice flavors in it. You'll actually oftentimes find a bunch of rice grains at the bottom of Nigori sake bottles. And then there's also Amazake, or sweet sake, made with the sweet, ricey, mushy byproduct of regular sake. There are a bunch of other types of sake, but the rest is on you to venture forth into the wild and try them all. I hope you all have a happy and healthy World Sake Day, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe so I can make more fun Japan-related content. Gokigenyo!